I've got a chair here today that has a couple of broken spots in it. This one back leg here is broken off where the screw goes into the seat. So I'm going, my plan is to epoxy the thing back together and then I'll put some splines in it. So as we go along I'll show you what we're doing. Here's a close-up of the brake which I'm going to scrub with a wire brush and clean the thing up before I epoxy it back together and put the clamps on to hold everything in place while the epoxy sets up. I've now got the epoxy spread on there and I have put the clamps on to hold it in place and we'll leave the thing set overnight and now we're going to take the clamps off. Clamps are out of the way and now it's time to take the seat off. It came off pretty easy. Actually, I did a bunch of stuff before I started this. Took some time and made a, a jig here to clamp to the side of the chair. And I'm just about ready to try making my first pass on uh, cutting the, the rowdy. That came out pretty good. Now we'll see what happens on the second pass. That pass came out really good. So now we're going to maybe go for a third time. Here we go. Well, I think I'll do a cleanup pass. Just a little bit rough looking down inside of there, so we'll just go one more time. Yep, looks pretty good. Now I think we'll take the clamps off and remove the, the jig and see how it looks when we've got everything out of the way. I think we'll be happy with it. Whoop, one more clamp to go.
finished product. I'm satisfied. We'll look at it from a couple of different angles here and there you can see it's about a half inch deep and uh, next we'll put the spline in. Here's another angle so you can get a better look at what we've done here. Got it all clamped down with glue in the hole and I think it's going to look out, work out pretty good. I'm questioning whether I need a second spline on that thing, but I don't want it to break, so I may go ahead and put another spline on it. Well, I'm not going to bore you with all the sanding and whatnot, but I've got my uh, little palm sander here, and I'm going to work this down until it's almost flush and then I'll have to do the rest of it uh, by hand. You get the picture. By the way, oak has a tendency to be a little bit tough to sand. So it's just going to take a little time, but I'll get it down where I'll be able to finish it and it'll look like a million bucks. Well, not quite. Well, there's the first one all finished. Looks pretty good, I think. Well, here's a good shot of the second spline that I put in. This is on the back of this chair leg where the broken spot was. And you can see this is a pretty good shot to show you where uh, I put the original first spline in on the side of the leg. And now you can see where I've put the one on the back of the leg there. And it ought to be just about as strong as it was when it was brand new. I've, of course, got to sand that down to make it be uniform like the, like the, the chair leg was originally. And it looks like I'm going to have to do a little faux graining they call it because uh, I wasn't able to find the piece of oak that had a grain cascading grain I guess you would call it like the chair lake has but uh, that being what it is I, I think it's going to be a pretty good fix after I get that done of course I've got to put the seat back on it and then it'll need to be cleaned up and, and refinished kind of been had a little bit of a rough life here for a while being in storage and being damp and a lot of the joints were loose but I've got them all tightened up now re-glued and we'll just see I think it's I think it's a worthwhile project and I hope that you have got some ideas if you have a broken chair that you want to fix it it is possible to fix them this way and if you've got a router and you can make yourself a jig which I did for this one and it's kind of kind of a rough looking jig but there it is and it doesn't matter what the jig looks like, but uh, it did make a pretty good, a pretty good cut, nice and clean, and took a lot of uh, hand sanding on the spline to get it to where it fit in there exactly, so that I could glue it in nice and tight. 
there's no use having big gaps in in a glue up because they're not there's no strength in glue it's just where it fa bonds wood to wood is where you get your your strength out of it